one room after another, after another, after another, with more and more pictures and murals. And It just doesn't end, man. I mean, I feel like now as I walk into this room, it gets a little more modern. And you can tell a lot by the time period if you look at people's hair, uh, especially facial hair. And then, um, I'm not even sure, look at that hairdo. <laughs> that is like the flat top of all flat tops. But you definitely can feel that it's getting a little more modern and um, we're getting away from the old ancient, ancient times of uh, Frederick the First. So uh, really cool stuff still keeps going on and on and on. And look at this little cool thing, like a little baby toy. Check out this OG radio flyer. It's like an old ancient telescope. Kind of looks like binoculars. And uh, well, this is what they used to do to do a little stargazing. What do you think, Dr. Krupp? Well, this is cool. If you head up to the top, um, it's more of a modern uh, exhibit of here in the 21st century. But over here, they have all these children's paintings that were entered in a competition or an exhibit, and they put them on display, which is really cool that they're out here supporting the children of Fredericksburg. Another cool, interesting thing, as you get to the top, you'll notice that the floor changes. These are in more of a zigzag W, whereas before, the floors down the stairs were more of a square pane. And this is the modern era of the exhibit. All right, here is a painting of Frederick Kronpins, I believe the name is, and he is a, a current royalty here in Denmark. Pretty cool. He gets the whole space to himself. All right, here's a cool little section of uh, things that happened between 1900 and 1920. Lots of cool little paintings and uh, just uh, another room of statues, paintings, murals. All right, what the hell is this guy doing? <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> Wonder what he's whispering in his ear. <laughs> All right. Very cool. As I walk around here in the Fredericksburg Castle. All right. Little Eskimo exhibit. Little polar bear action. Yeah, this is another one of those little tucked out rooms. Um, make sure that if you come here to this castle that you explore each and every little nook and cranny throughout this castle because as you get to one floor, you may think it ends, but then there's another hallway that just kind of opens up and has more cool and interesting things, portraits and uh, statues of Denmark's history. All right, so we got this little hallway of all the Danish dignitaries, busts. We swing around. This is a pretty cool little hallway of things that happened between 1943 and 1945. Probably all these guys had something to do with World War II and Denmark's involvement. Just another little room. This kind of depicts 1945 to 1960. 
Once again, of a Frederick Kronprinz, it's just a really great painting. If you see, you got a Frederick Kronprinz right here, and he's in some type of office setting, probably maybe even here at this castle. And over here, this giant mirror is a reflection of his family. I don't really know too much about the guy, but it looks like he has a wife, uh, two boys, and two young girls in the picture, which is really well done here. All right, guys, that's going to just about do it for us today at the castle inside. But one of the other great things that you got to see is the grounds of the castle and behind it, how exquisite the garden is. So let's go check that part out. All right, guys, I'm in the lower depths of the castle. And it's really cool if you look through here. I'm not going to walk through there because we're running out of time and I want to show you the uh, yard and the garden and everything. But this is an exhibit for children right now. But it just gives you that feeling that a castle basement should have. That, well, they got the, the intruders locked up down here in this old ancient castle and be in this basement. And you can feel how much cooler it is. The temperature is definitely feels like you're underground. So let's go and let's check out the garden before they kick us out for the day. All right, so once again, we're back in the courtyard. Get ready. We're going to go uh, back through the first gate that we walked through to get into the central courtyard and then you make a right and you head to the back where I'm going to show you the most exotic epic garden that you've ever seen. How great it is uh, to feel the history when you're at places like this and well if you've seen my video uh, the, on the Tiananmen Gate, that's a pretty cool one to watch. I'll go ahead and throw it up there right now. You can see the historic gates that I walked through there, but this place also has a lot of historic, like monumental gates and archways that you have to walk through. And now we're headed onto the left side of the building. Where we're going to head through that great stone wall back there, and we're going to go check out the gardens here at Fredericksburg Castle. Wow, check this out. Right away we walk in here and we got the surrounding moat, but look at the lush green kind of garden surrounded by these beautiful trees here. This place is going to be awesome. You're going to go ahead and you're going to see a little maze of bushes that's going to be surrounding and maybe the royals came out here and they just sat out here and enjoyed themselves. I guess the ducks down there in the moat answer my question about there being crocodiles or not. Uh, I don't think there's any in this particular water or else those ducks would not be there. But uh, yeah, still pretty cool to see. I'm um, not really sure what this little island here is for. Maybe they went ahead and set that up for the last line of defense, but uh, still just an epic design. And let me give you a good shot at what it looks like behind the castle. Oftentimes, Fredericksburg Castle is referred to as the most beautiful castle in all of Scandinavia. And well, I gotta agree with them. I mean, just look at this thing. Massive, epic castle. Look at that. Definitely one of the most prettiest places I've ever been to. As uh, we got the castle and the lake behind us, and now we're heading straight into the king and queen's little backyard and uh well lost for words on this one guys lost for words all right so now i'm in the garden in the backyard if you will definitely one of the most prettiest places i've ever seen and been to but if i whip around look at the king and queen's backyard here Check this out. I mean, they got a, a grass a bush maze. Um, they got flowers. It's uh, immaculate and uh, it's kept up and just like its original form, it looks like it did 400 years ago. And man, couldn't have asked for a better day to be out here to show you guys this amazing castle grounds. All right, here I am at the entrance to the garden. Look how massive this thing is. I mean, unfortunately, we're running out of time and they are going to ask us to leave, but I'll give you a good look of what we can see in the time being. Already one of the things that I can tell you is how uh, peaceful it is and the tranquility in nature that you feel when you're out here is just really, really nice. And uh, even though there's a lot of people out here, you can just feel that this yard was something special. And it was years ago, but it still has kept that amazing enchantment feeling. 
All right, one of the cool things that you're gonna see when you're out here at the garden is I, each on the right side and then on the left side is this maze of bushes and hedges. Pretty cool, pretty intricate. Um, they don't allow you to walk around on it, which is probably a good thing because thousands of people walking through those bushes will definitely destroy it. So um, you can't walk through it, but it's still really cool to look at it. Check it out. And then they have this canal, if you will, waterfall running through the middle of the garden all the way up to the top where you can see there's water fountains up there and a little hilltop and they have statues lining the little u-shaped area where the hill is must have been good to be a king all right we locked out um i know it's uh usually not the most ideal situation when you come to a place and they have construction, but something of this magnitude, something that involves uh, construction of bushes, it's kind of neat to see how they do it. So if you look, it looks like they're getting ready to lay down the grounds of it, and they have like almost like metal trough areas where they lay the bushes, and then that's what formulates the, the zigzags and the maze that you saw back there. All right, this is pretty cool. As you head to the upper level, you're uh, privy to some more bushes, a little hedge, a little hedge maze, a smaller one, and then we got another little water fountain. So all kinds of goodness, all kinds of really cool landscaping, and just a really beautiful backyard garden setting here behind Fredericksburg Castle. So as you walk up the hill in the backyard, each little hill goes up for about 10 feet, and then it plateaus where you have this canal still running through, and then another waterfall. Then it goes up another level, plateaus, and then it goes up to another level with waterfall after waterfall, which eventually just runs out down here, down the next one, and out into the big moat area. As I stand here on this canal, looking out at Fredericksburg Castle, I can't but think of this is the stuff that fairy tales were made of. I mean, look at this. We have all kinds of lords and ladies, and the history behind it um, is really evident inside that castle. And then you come out here to this garden area, and it just feels like 15th century Europe. It just feels very surreal. I mean, coming from just a kid from Kenmore, unbelievable. What's really cool about the garden out here is, well, keep in mind that the castle itself has the architecture and the engineering from the Renaissance era, but out here in the garden, this engineering and this style, this layout, if you will, comes from the Baroque period, which was shortly after the Renaissance period. And um, well, it's really cool that you have two different styles and periods that are blended together and made such a wonderful place. This is really cool. If you look behind me, you got a lane edged off with bushes that go up all the way to the back end of the garden. And as I walk up it, I can't help but think that this here road was actually the same road that Danish royalty used to ride their horses, the king, the queen, and all its court, and used to come out here and just hang out in the garden. Really cool to be in this epic part of history. All right, well, here it is. 
I am three levels up and this is the end of that Grand Canal that runs out to the moat. This is really cool behind me. We got a little wedding photos. I grew up next to Niagara Falls and that is an amazing place to go ahead and take your uh, wedding photos. But here also too, you can see young Danish couples coming out here and making some awesome photos that they can remember for a lifetime at this beautiful place. If you haven't seen my videos on Niagara Falls, I'll go ahead and throw the cards up there right now. You can check those out. Well, that's gonna do it for us today. Wow, I hope you had a great time watching this video of Travel Man Dan as we're out here at the Frederiksborg Castle in Copenhagen, Denmark. Unbelievable experience that I will never forget. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope you saw some really cool things. I hope you learned something new and interesting. And most of all, I hope you are inspired to get your ass out here to Denmark, to this castle, and check it out for yourself. If you like what I'm doing and you haven't already, go ahead, hit that sub button, ring the bell, give me a like, leave me a comment below, let me know where you want to see me go next. I'd love to hear from you. And if you've been out here to the Frederiksborg Castle, put it down in the comments. Let me know how your experience was. Thanks again for watching. I'm Travel Man Dan, and remember, it's a big world out there. Make sure you see every bit of it.